There is a runaway trolley barreling down the railway tracks. Ahead on the tracks, there are five people tied up but unable to move. The trolley is headed straight for them. You are standing some distance off in the train yard next to a lever. If you pull the lever, the trolley will switch to another set of tracks. However, you notice that there is one person on the side track. You have two and only two options. Do nothing in which the trolley will kill the five people on the main track. Pull the lever diverting the trolley onto the side track where it will kill one person. What is the right thing to do? If you are like the rest of us, your answer should be pulling the lever and saving the highest number of people. Now I need you to consider this slightly different version. As before a trolley is hurtling down a track towards five people. You are on the bridge under which it will pass. As it happens, there is a very fat man next to you. Your only way to stop the trolley is to push him over the bridge and onto the track, killing him to save five. Will you proceed? This time, if you are like most people, you will disapprove of pushing the fat man to save a net of five lives. What happened? The thing is, in the first version, people used utilitarian perspective, which suggests that we should do the thing that guarantees the greatest good for the highest number of people. But in the second version, people decided to use another perspective, which is the deontological perspective, which dictates that the morality of an action should be based on whether that action itself is right or wrong, rather than based on the consequences of the action. But I can hear some of you now saying, why are we wasting our time on such a thing that is less likely to ever take place in the real world? And to those of you who would like to say that I couldn't agree more, it is less likely to happen. But the thing is, we have a very slight problem. We are in the middle of a transition from traditional vehicles to autonomous ones, which is of course is a good thing, because according to WHO, quote, every year the lives of approximately 1.3 million people are cut short as a result of a low traffic crash. Between 20 and 50 million more people suffer non-fatal injuries, with many incurring a disability as a result of their injury, end quote. Followed by an NHTSA study, concluded that 94% of these severe traffic accidents are the cause of a human error. Now you can imagine how many lives we can save by getting rid of this error and replacing it by artificial intelligence. But allow me to clear some confusions first. All the autonomous automobiles on the market right now are still in the beta version. They still need the intervention of the driver, and therefore he is the one responsible for any accidents that might, God forbid, take place. We can only say we have driverless cars when we can, as promised by Elon Musk, summon our cars to us in another city. Now let's imagine we are living in this time, okay? How do you want your car to behave when it's faced with a trolley problem? Your driverless car finds itself in a situation when it should either kill one person or five. Again, sacrificing one life to save a net of five. Seems a rational plan, right? What if the one person sacrificed this Einstein? Then killing the five people possibility would be available on the table. What if I told you that there is another option in which the car can neither kill Einstein nor the five people? The automobile swerves and kills you instead. Now tell me, do you want to own a car that can kill you in such situation? You know what? Let me put you in the car maker's shoes. What automobiles would you choose to produce? The ones that makes its passenger's life a priority or the one that can choose to kill him if doing so can cause the least damage? I will let you answer this question in the comments. However, you should keep in mind that if you decide to make a utilitarian car, which is the one that tries to make the least damage, you should also tell us how you would go about convincing people to own a car that can put their lives on the line. Or maybe you decide, clients are kings, your driveless car would never compromise their lives. As Mercedes-Benz executive Christoph Van Hugo said, if you know you can save at least one person, save the one in the car. And by doing so, I should say congrats because you and your car are doomed. How could you allow yourself to make a car that is willing to save its passenger and probably kill a baby? You know what, let's put our opinions aside for a bit and see what the experts who might spend countless sleepless nights thinking about the issue have to offer. In a study, 900 participants were presented with a series of different collision scenarios. 75% decided that the self-driving car manufacturers should always program the car to save the innocent bystanders. And it seems like Helen Fra, a professor of practical philosophy at Stockholm University, backs up this conclusion. Because if you decide to get in a driverless car, you should own up to the risk that comes with it. And of course, you can argue with that because what if there was a baby? Did he make the conscious decision to be in the car to tolerate the consequences? But at least based on this perspective, the passenger should always be the one to die when both are single individuals. And then there is those who suggested that there should be a national score that evaluates the type of citizen you are. And based on that, the autonomous vehicle would decide something similar to China's social credit system, which is a set of databases that monitor and assess the trustworthiness of individuals, companies, and government entities. You know what? In these extreme scenarios when we cannot favor one person's life over another, why don't we make the artificial intelligence give us his unbiased decision by choosing randomly? In the end, we all are gonna die, right? Finally, if you decide to get in an autonomous automobile, make sure it is going on a rational speed because this what would allow the car to stop before it's too late. And just like that, you bought yourself an escape zone from a trolley problem. So instead of thinking whether we should pull the lever and save the net of five people, why don't we try to slow down the trolley and buy us some time to untie all of them?